Take an end table from brass and glass to badass. Stay tuned. I'm Rick. This is the shack. I know many of you have seen these. Especially if you go to yard sales, there's always somebody who's got an old brass end table, dining table or something. And nothing wrong with them, they just get kind of ugly after a while and they don't blend in anymore. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it a light sanding, I'm going to repurpose this, paint this. Instead of replacing the glass on top, I think I'm going to make me a nice wooden centerpiece and drop in here. But I'm going to use the glass as a template. A lot of possibilities with this, so we'll see how it goes and just figure out what I'm going to do as I go. Because nothing's in concrete, nothing's written down, no designs. Just thinking out loud. And then lift it up. Here we go. I let that dry. Now, since this really got put aside for a couple weeks because of Christmas and New Year's, and I've had some time to think about it, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try <clears throat> to make a frame for this so it'll sit in here. And when I mount this in here, and then we'll have the drawer here, it'll slide in and out, and then we'll make the top. So let's get the angles figured out and start getting these cut to fit. Okay, see if I can get this somehow close. I can kind of figure out my angle here. So that looks like the angle there. Looks like it's almost 45 and a half. Normally, when you're doing angle cuts and building something, like a picture frame, you cut your angle, get your measurement, set a stop block on your saw so all lengths are the same on top and bottom or left side right side whatever you want that way when you put it together your angles are good and if you cut a picture frame and you cut the pieces individually they will never line up and you'll never get a square same principle falls over now unfortunately this top is not square i cut sides the same length front and back and all these little corner pieces the same but when it comes to putting the front and back on it's not lining up so this will be my drawer front I'm actually going to keep cutting it down until it fits in properly then I think I'm going to get all this set up and then I have to make another section here for the drawer to connect to the drawer glides now I shaved it down to about an eighth inch more. There it goes. And well, that's good. Now again, these aren't going to be lined up just yet because I got to mark them all. But on the inside here, there's a spot well that sticks out 16th or better. So I'm gonna, I actually have to just do a little chip out right here so it'll slide against that. See it rocks back and forth because of that spot well. Now I get everything set up. I'm gonna run all my pieces through this and the top is what I'm going to run through so it'll sit flush. So I'll, everyone, that's why I put the air on because I want the top to sit as flush to that metal as possible. Now I'm going to keep tapping this over little by little, then that way they're all the same width all the way down. Now that it's all been cut to the same width, it all blends now. Next thing I'm going to do, because remember the spot weld on the legs prevent this from setting flat, wobbles a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to use a Forstner bit, I might go three quarter, I'm not sure yet. 
but like right here in the bottom, I'll mark it because I got to notch it. I'm just going to take this and drill that. So hopefully it'll be enough to go around the spot well so that will sit flush. So now they all fit. Good to go. Now that I have this all, it's not glued yet. I just have it clamped in my little BC clamp here. So it stays together. So this is how it's going to end up. And I went down, got the drawer glides. I went ahead and got 20 inch. They'll be sitting about right there. I'm hoping I can fit this into the end table before I can get it all glued up. <laughs> I don't want to glue it and not be able to get in. I'm kind of screwed. So I'm checking this before I hand. No. Oh, there we go. Go that way. Oh, perfect. And this. Oh, there it goes. Sweet. <laughs> All right. But it fits. Fits really good. I'm gonna like that. That's gonna. That actually looks pretty good. <laughs> and I have these glued. I had strapped for about 20 minutes so they could set up. Now I'm going to glue these two here and put this in here just for support for now. That's done. I'm gonna let this set tonight. This dried overnight. Looks good. I got this clamped in. So now I'm gonna go around and drill me some holes. Okay. All my holes are drilled. I'm gonna take this out. So now I'm just going to go through and drill all these out so the screws will go through. What I'm going to do now is put two screws in here to hold this where I want. I'm going to take this out, flip this around, mark the line right here so I know where I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut just below so when I open the drawer, I'm just going to grab from underneath, open it, and when I close it, I actually bought self-closing, soft-closed. It will suck it up in there. And look like this. It just look like there's not even a drawer in there. And I got to bring my blade up to the height I need to cut this, which is about right there. And then what I'm going to do is right there is a line. So I'm going to cut. I want this line to be right on the edge of this blade. That's what it's going to look like. See this will pull out and will slide up in there when it, the drawer will pull that right in there. So you won't even really tell that there's a drawer here at all. I have a lot of this cedar left over from the project. I'm going to utilize it to make the drawer and to make the bracket or the framework in here for that drawer. In order to keep this straight all the way back, these are mounted flush here. I went ahead and decided to put these little blocks behind here. So now the front is flush and then the back I can open and close. Kind of tweak this till I make sure it's nice and straight and I got the same measurements here as I do here. So I just take, took this down another sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to glue these to the side and do a couple of pinners in just to hold it. So now you see what I have here in my opening. As long as I am at 9 and 7 sixteenths, I am good. So this back here is 9 and 7 sixteenths. I'm going to glue these side brackets up real quick. Extra off of there. 
then I'm going to flip this over. Glue that up. Clamp it there. All right, I'm going to let this dry and set up. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to go out here. I have my plane already pulled out. So instead of 5 8 thick, I'm going to plane it down to half inch thick. <clears throat> Just give me a little, little extra. Yeah, I think that's close enough. Think it's close enough to half inch? I think so. Now I have my box jig set up. And when I go to cut it to length, two and a half inches puts it right on this joint right here. Now I have my blade put back in and it looks like I'm going to that should be right it. So I'm going to go ahead and rip these real quick. Make sure that's where I want. That's my drawer. Tomorrow we'll do the bottom. Now I'm going to set my my blade to quarter inch depth using my little Wixie digital readout here. Got it zeroed out so now I'm going to lower the blade down and then bring that up over it and raise that up till it reads a quarter inch. And we have lift off. I have a little cut right here. I brought the fence in till this cut into it and I scribed my line. So that's the width of the, my blade here that I'm going to make it cut. So I can plunge down, run till I hit that mark. As far as I want to go, we'll go back this way. That's as far as I want to go. So now I have a guideline. I'll make one pass. Run on the bottom here, eyes and ears. Now I'm going to bump that out and run my test piece through till it fits on my material. This is this piece of scrap. As you see, I got the cut in. So this is my test piece. Make sure it fits. Perfect. I'm going to slide right in. Look at that. So that's set. Perfect fit. Now I can cut the second pass. And you see, that's with the plunge. And you see at the very end here, it stops so it doesn't go all the way through. And it matches these. It stops so you don't see it on the outside. And I got the bottom cut. So far looks good. Okay. Cool. The drawer is all glued up, squared up. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit. So I'm putting my attention to the top. And I said, I'm, I'm using everything I can find in scrap. I'm using up as much as my scrap as possible. I got a bunch of this rough cut. I'm going to run it all through the planer. I'm going to run it through the table saw to squirt the edges so I can glue them together. And this is going to be my top. I got all the wood prepped and ready. So before I do all my biscuit joinery, I'm going to set this on here so I make sure I place all the joints where I want so they're not in line with 
a cut or anything. A scribish, real lightly, just kind of idea. I don't. This isn't the final cut. I just want to make sure I don't put any of the biscuit joints right where I'm going to be cutting or close to where it might be cutting. There we have it. So I'm just going to start gluing this thing up. And continue the process. Okay. Now I started out with 80 grit, went to 150 to 220. It's nice and smooth, I like the feel. That's smooth. Let me go get the glass top, set it on here and get going. I have my two-way tape here and here. I'm gonna leave this on here so I can set it on my line here. Make sure it's set, then slide this out, set it down, because I don't want it to move. I'm going to put tape on the edges here so I don't break the glass and I'm just going to cut a little bit on the outside of the edge of this. I have the bit in my router. I have to make sure that this bit just clears the wood. I don't want it it can go up just a little bit because it's just a hair off the wood because of the two-way tape. Very, very nice. Now. Oh, sweet baby. There we go. Now let's see how this fits in here. Oh man, look at that. It doesn't even tilt. That's solid. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. And I think if I do a little round over, that's going to be enough. That's nice. I think it looks pretty good. Mounting the drawer glides. Normally, you would go like an inch and a quarter from the bottom up if it's a standard drawer. And you have these guidelines that the manufacturer suggests. Since this isn't a standard drawer, and where I want it, I basically want it to be just behind my box joints so you can see them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go three quarters inches back. And then from the top, I'm going to go three quarters inches down. And that puts me about center where I want my drawer glide to be. Since this is only a two and a half inch <laughs> drawer, 
I want to basically just center this on there. There. So when I put this on here, slide it on. There it goes. You close it. It's gonna pull that in. Now to mount the door glide on the inside, this really isn't square right here, so I can't have the same measurement to go in on both sides, so I have to do them individually. Now on when I mount the drawer in here, I put these, this piece of wood, this little spacer on the side here, sat the glide on that, and that's where I want the drawer. It's not setting flush here, it's just off it a little bit, and that's what I want. I want it up a little bit. So I'm going to use that piece of wood to set this on here, and slide this back to the depth that it was. It's right there. Now I'll just slide this out and I'll drill me a hole right here. Put the drawer in here. I get the measurement for this side, put the screws in, then the drawer's mounted. Well, there's a moment of truth. Let's see if I got these in here right or not. I can mount this exactly where it goes, but again, I have to shave this down because right there is where I want it, just below that. So it's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna take the table saw, we're gonna trim it down a little bit at a time. After about three passes, the top, put this in here right there, clamp it to the drawer, just miss, just passes. Now that looks nice. Grab it from the bottom. The door. Flip it. Oops. Yeah. Pulls it right in. Well, that's it. I used a little bit of mini wax, oil modified polyurethane. Just to give it a couple quick little light coats to seal it, should be good. Now with this thing dry, we can reassemble this and get this all done. So the three holes are the front. If nothing else, that I like the best out of this project. I really like this drawer. I hope in some way this has inspired you. Seriously, I, that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to see stuff like this and think about, hmm, you know, I could probably do that. And depending on your experience, depending on the availability of tools, 
you can go from mild to completely wild. I mean, I could have done a, a major inlay up here. I could have put these together in a diamond shape, 45 everything, and then cut it out. I mean, there's so many possibilities, but it's up to you. It's your personal interpretation of what you want to do to something like this. But just find some. Next time you're out and about, hit a yard shell or two when you see them. See if they have any of the brass and glass old stuff that nobody wants anymore and get rid of. And look at the design. See if it fits you in some way. Maybe if you paint it yellow, paint it purple, paint it blue, paint it white, paint it whatever, but repurpose it and give it a new look. Go from blah, dreary, no attitude, brass and glass to something badass. Doesn't matter what you have available to you. Just get out there and try something to get out of that comfort zone. That's why I say build it for your sanity. You don't know what you're going to do unless you try it. And all that onslaught of life and ah, this level of crazy stuff going on. You get out to your garage, your shed, wherever your shop is at, wherever your tools are at. You go out there and it all floats away. You start working on this, you're focused on this. You don't care about everything else. Everything just, and your stress level goes from this level of craziness down to a manageable calm. And that's where you should be. That's why I do this. That's why I want you to do this. I want you to relax, enjoy, and have fun on projects. Get out there. I know you can do this. That's why my video is a little bit long, because I want to show you what I do. So if you're living on tools, you can say, well, I don't have a chop saw, but I have a miter saw, a miter box. I can set that I can cut these angles. You know, there's things you can do. Just have to think a little bit about, okay, he has that, I don't, but I can use this instead. And that's what it's about. And I just have the desire to make you get out of your comfort zone, get off your butt, get off the couch, get off the computer, and do build this. Yes, it's fine to look through and get ideas, but don't spend all your life on there. Get off your butt, get out to the shop. This is where it is. This is where life is enjoyable. Life is calm. This is where you get your sanity back. Like, subscribe, and when you do subscribe, hit that notification button so you are notified when the videos come out. Otherwise, you're not gonna be notified. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy day to view my channel, to check this project out. Seriously, I am very, very humbled and I am very thankful. Be blessed. Take back your shack. Build it for your sanity. We'll see you in the next video.